Welcome, everybody, to Dead Talk Live. Today, our guests are writer-director Thomas G. Waits and star Jam Murphy from the upcoming film Target, which is premiering on demand on Amazon Prime Video, Apple TV, Google Play, and Vudu this Tuesday, April 18th. Guys, thank you so much for being on the show today. Congratulations on the film. Very well done. And let's just get right to it. Jam. Uh, a few days ago, you mentioned in a social media post, you were supposed to be like girl number two in a scene, and you walked away with the leading role. So tell us how that all came about. Um, actually, yeah, if you look at the credits in the movie, uh, the character near the end is is called Jamie, because that was originally supposed to be my role. And I think how it all happened, maybe you should ask Thomas, but... Um, <laughs> But yeah, I guess I guess we just we met and he he saw a leading lady in me. And he made a great choice. Now, Tom, not only did you write, direct this film, but you played a major role in the score of the of the film. Two questions. Did you do the score before or after filming? And did it really help you connect with your characters? Yeah, um, I wrote the songs as I was writing the script. You know, I would hear a phrase like one day in rehearsal, Jamie said, I feel like a broken girl. Mm -hmm. And I took that title and I ran with it. And then I wrote a song, uh, uh, which I used in the film. You know, she was just expressing how she was feeling in that moment. Yeah. She's not a broken girl, but she was just like poetically, metaphorically, describing her state of mind in that particular moment because she's such an open and vulnerable actor, which is why I cast her as the lead. Uh, because, you know, you rarely get someone that's, you know, physically as alluring as someone like Jamie, but also has skill and talent Absolutely. and craft and somebody you can go up to in the middle of a scene and say, listen, I want you to play it this way instead of that way. And she just thinks about it for a second and goes, okay, let me be clear. This is what you want instead of that. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want instead of this. Okay, good. Give me a second. I got it. And then she goes. Yeah. And she gives it 120% every take, every time out. I mean, any director out there looking for a real actress, you know, would be so fortunate to find Jamie. I completely agree. Now, Jamie, the film is a sex comedy. Were there any scenes that when you first read them made you feel uncomfortable to do that you spoke with Tom and you guys worked together to redo the scene to where you felt comfortable and could give it your best effort? Sure. As I as I was reading it, I me and Tom and I got so close um, throughout this process. I really just put all of my trust in him and I, and I did trust him. So I, nothing really, nothing really scared me too much. I definitely had a family meeting before we went in to, <laughs> to film this. I wanted my family to know, like, um, you know, we were going to be doing a movie like this and there was nothing that scared me right off the bat, but, but once we were filming, there was a scene uh, towards the end that I realized in the middle of shooting, I just, right before we did it, I was just like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think she would say this. It was okay. really how I, how I felt. Um, and he was like, all right, it's cut. We're not doing it. It was cut. So there it wasn't much conversation about it. Um, he just, he just said, all right, don't say it. That's, that's, that's <laughs> great. Now, uh, Tom, you previously mentioned that the, the husband, Nick Gregory, the character of uh, Nick was the hardest for you to write. What were some of the issues that you really found trouble with in creating the character of Nick? I guess he's going through the the story. It's really, you know, his demise or his crisis I should say, that I got involved with. And as I got further and deeper into his crisis, I thought, well, I'm not going to hold back. I mean, if I'm going to embrace sexuality, I'm going to go as far with it as I can. I mean, I do that with everything I do. I take it as far until they say stop. 
I take it as far as possible. And I always, of course, do too much, but I had to delve into his psychology. What is it like for a man that's facing, you know, men do face a midlife crisis, nothing comparable to what women go through. And I don't want to pretend that it is even comparable, but it is a more of a psychological crisis. And many men, or at least the traditional solution many men turn to is to find a younger woman. Yep, or you sports know, car. To, or sports car, <laughs> or both. And that's <laughs> going to be the answer to all the problems. And then a lot of my friends that have gone that route have found that it wasn't very satisfying in point of fact. And maybe that, that there was something else sexually going on inside of them that they weren't ready to embrace just yet. That makes sense. Now, Jamie, your character, Laura, from the very beginning of the film, this is how the film starts, is put in a difficult situation by her husband in his request of you. Uh, you portrayed Laura brilliantly. I just want to put that out there. How did you... Absolutely brilliantly. How did you put yourself in Laura's mindset and say, what if my husband came to me with this request? Well, <laughs> I think that the idea of compersion, which is what is being explained here. Oh, am I frozen? No, no, no. You're still am there. Am I frozen? No, no, we okay. got you. Okay, I, <laughs> I think the, the idea of compersion, which is being which is what is being explored here. Um, I have personally been, a, a, I have personally been um, presented, affected, affected presented by. with, yes, affected with. I have been in the position, um, not with my husband, but with somebody that I had feelings for. So I, I knew, I knew what it felt like. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Uh, in your opinion, Jam, why, does Laura just not leave Nick and is willing to go along with this? I mean, is her love for him that deep or is it something else? It's, it's, it's a love, it's, it's a love, it's a life that they've made. It's, I mean, I don't think for one, it didn't seem like for one second that that was like an option. It, 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 it didn't seem like an option. She loves him, but they also had a life together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this was, this was what, this is what she decided, you know, what she signed up for. And I don't think, I don't think people go into relationships not knowing what they sign up for. I think she had some kind of idea yeah. that this was in him before. Yeah, I, uh, I could totally see that. Now, Tom, we live in an age of political correctness and people have to really measure what comes out of their mouth when they're talking to new people or people they just barely know. Uh, regarding what happens in people's marriages, this film uh, expresses and touches on some real truths and realities. Uh, was that an important message for you to get across? Yeah, it's funny you should say that. A, a bunch of people I grew up with that had, have all gone to Catholic school uh, had a great deal to say about the film afterwards. I mean, in a very positive way. They were saying things like, this is what my wife and I need to talk about and don't talk about. Yeah. We need to talk about what's underneath the surface. Instead of us just going through the motions of our relationship, what's really going on? Am I attracted to other people? If so, how do we deal with that? How does one deal with one's repressed emotions in a you know society where uh, polyamory is frowned upon and uh, you know not considered acceptable and immoral even? But yet, you know, this one friend of mine said that uh, you know he, for example, has buys his wife this expensive lingerie every year. And every year she just puts it in a drawer and <laughs> never wears it. And he's just longing for her to break out one of these days. She's going to wear that. So one time for Christmas, he took 25 years worth of lingerie and put it in a big gigantic box. And she opened it up at Christmas time like, oh, honey, 
what's this? And she realized that it was all the lingerie. 25, years, 25 years worth of presents. Well, Not... you know, relation, partnerships are give and take, aren't they? I mean, yeah. You know, everybody has to compromise. You know, you may like to sleep on the right side of the bed. She might like the left. You might have to acquiesce and give her the right side of the bed if it makes her more. And you know, this of course is much more. This is much a much more serious issue, because it has to do with sexual intimacy. Exactly, and, it goes into the bedroom of uh, people's lives, and that's where this film really becomes different from what we've seen on the screen before. Now, Jam, did you find the marital dynamics in this film refreshing as opposed to what we have been seeing on the screen? forever now whether uh it's a man having an affair a woman having an affair very mainstream stuff and this movie sort of takes that and flips it on its head what are, what are your thoughts on that aspect i think it's really interesting because it was after we filmed the movie that i started seeing it pop up in a lot of shows so i think tom really had his finger on the pulse of something and um you know, when I got it and when I read it, I was mainly just, you know, trying to get into character and understand who I who the character was. So I didn't really think about that. But it was afterwards that I that I was like, wow, I, I'm pretty impressed with with, you know, the timeline of this, because it was definitely something becoming more popular in, in screen anyways. Maybe it's been going on just just as much for just as long. But it is something it's absolutely something new and tom that leads me to you and this question people are going to read the synopsis and they might think it's a traditional movie about an open marriage but it's completely not what do you say to people uh you know let's say you somebody comes up to you and say yeah you made that new film what is how would you summarize this film in one or two lines uh to really capture the essence of target it's about a, a man going through a sexual identity crisis with a beautiful young wife that he is deeply in love with. Now, Jam, there is a little bit of an age difference between Laura and Nick. Um, do you think that has anything to do with it? Um, because people are going to look at this and they're going to look at Nick and see laura and be like what is this guy complaining about okay uh do you think that age difference is important to the story itself i think that maybe maybe nick looks at his younger wife and wants her to experience and explore sexually with someone more her age maybe um maybe that goes into the feelings that he's having and wanting to have you know oh you kind of froze there for a little bit um, there we go we got you back we got together. you back okay there we go. so yeah maybe it maybe it plays into it in that way okay uh let's talk about the character of chip philip stoddard who did a great job as well uh he's a very complex uh character Tom, when you were creating his character, there's so many elements to Chip. There's his childhood, uh, about him being adopted, not being adopted. How did that childhood play into the man that we see on the screen? So a lot of it was uh, based on uh, truth. You know, um, I know people that, were orphaned and they did end up in jail and they ended up going down a really tough road many of them and so i kind of created an amalgamation of you know sort of james dean only in the 21st century of mm -hmm. uh, what he might be going through that he really uh, um has been kicked around like an old trash can nobody wants him yeah. And that's the way it works in, in that deal. Um, you know, people will be your parents for two years, collect the money, and then move you on to another home with absolutely no uh, affection or feeling or love whatsoever. It's purely a 
it's a business deal. Yeah, it and, is. Um, and it's, uh, you know, they rip off the state, the number of kids that they can take in the house and they don't really want to parent these children. And so, of course, it's bad enough for a child, just an ordinary child. The wonder in an ordinary child's eyes is one of the most amazing things I've ever seen in my life, uh, having had two children. And then to have that so corrupted by parents that don't want their children and the, the deleterious effect that that produces on the person in society they can't help but do what they've always done which is to steal cheat lie rob rip people off because you know that's what they know they're con artists exactly and exactly. once you're a con artist you're always a con artist they say now jam uh, oh i'm sorry i didn't mean to cut you off but you know i i want to talk about laura's relationship with Chip, as opposed to Laura's relationship with her husband, uh, Nick. When you were, you know, playing with Philip, and um, I shouldn't say playing, when you were acting opposite of Philip and Nick, how did you try to make the dynamics different between husband and wife and wife and lover? Uh, were there any kind of special approaches? Because you, we, there's a very different chemistry between Laura and her husband and Laura and Chip that we see on the screen. How did you try to make that come through on, on what we see as the audience? Well, first of all, I was working with such incredible and magnificent people and actors. They're both just so talented and different. And I think that that had a lot to do with the difference in, in chemistry. But I think the chemistry is were established uh, in rehearsal. Okay. Um, I there. I remember specifically one moment looking across the room at Nick, and just and he and it, and it, and he looked back at me the same exact way, and there was just a love there, like a like a like a love that that had been there, and I felt that with him and with with Philip or with Chip, it was new. So there was you know, not nerves and exploring it right away. I felt like it was a switch for her to like be excited about once she brought him home exploring. But once once it really did get intimate and they got into the bedroom, that was somewhere she hadn't gone before. And and it and there what there were some nerves. So it was it was just a, a new love, a new budding love versus versus one that was established and had been there for years, a marriage. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the comedic elements of the, of the film. This is a comedy after all. It seemed to have come, the comedy elements seemed to come very natural for you. It, uh, <laughs> was that just you having a lot of conversations with Tom? Because comedy really relies on timing. And if the timing is right, you're going to nail it and it's going to be very, very funny. Uh, have you done comedy before? Do you have any training in comedy? How did you work the comedic aspect of your role? Have to I've never had, oh, sorry. I've never had any training in comedy. <laughs> I've, I've done a lot of comedy on stage, so I am familiar with what <laughs> I think makes people laugh. But I think, as I said, um, you know, the other day, comedy is cruelty. You know, the cruelty of him being locked out of his own, I don't want to give away the plot, his own uh, bedroom. Yeah by choice is so painfully cruel but it's hysterical <laughs> it's just so wait, funny that this wait, can I say something? Guy, yeah go on go ahead Joe. we do you know how many takes were in the can trashed because he was laughing at his own jokes <laughs> <laughs> we could see that right now <laughs> I mean, you know, Jeb, going over to you, I mean, were you nervous about the comedy aspect of this film or did it just really come naturally? I have to say doing this film made me realize I think I think I prefer to do comedy because it's so much more fun. <laughs> um, but but again, I just get you know, it's just it goes to the actors. I mean, I really was just listening to them. I mean, how funny is Nick's laugh? Just his laugh, just the way he is, yeah. 
and he's the same way in, in, in real life. He amplifies it a little bit for this character and for on screen, but it, just him laughing makes me laugh. So, so whenever he would go on a tangent or these monologues that Tom would write that came out of the twisted mind of Thomas Wade, <laughs> I was just genuinely listening and trying to understand it. And that reality of me try was, I guess, funny. I wasn't, yeah. you know, I guess I wasn't trying to be funny. I was just trying to understand. <laughs> it came through as very funny. Tom, there's a lot of like symbolism. As you can see, it says actor studio behind me. I don't know. I'm if not sure. Can... That's right. You are at the actor studio. That is so And that's cool. where that's where Jamie is getting her training. And that's why, like Marilyn Monroe, she is not just a great actress, but a great comedian. So I think that answers your question about the comedy. It does. It does. Now, Tom, there's a lot of symbolism in this film. I want to talk about the deer. People may watch this film and be a little confused about the deer. And people are like, what are you talking about? You'll understand when you watch the film. What do the deer represent uh, in this film? The deer represent purity you know what people are like before they become morally corrupted by the various uh and sundry complications that life throws at them deer just seem to me like dogs to just want to love you know they don't eat other animals they're vegetarian uh they're nocturnal creatures and there's just a sweetness about them that i thought would have an effect upon Philip's, you know, hardened character yeah. that it would break through his shell. And deer represents to me, you know, I guess Walt Disney, right? I mean, I, I don't know, Bambi, the, the innocence of youth, yeah. the innocence of life before one becomes, uh, you know, uh, Basically corrupted by the just life itself and becoming an adult and having all those childhood yeah, dreams right. washed away. Life's hard. I mean, yeah. life is hard, and so people develop defenses. And and but what are we like before that? You know, that, that's what I was reaching for with the symbol of the deer. Mm. Now, Jam, I want to throw the last question to you. Having done this film, and it looks like you had such a great time doing it. What do you walk away from with this film, uh, having done it, having portrayed the role of Laura? How has it improved you as an actor? And what are you looking forward to moving forward in your career? I mean, we don't have enough time for me to <laughs> tell you all of the all of the amazing things that has ha, has and I expect to come out of this. I think that the the most important thing has been the community and and me realizing how important it is to have people that are doing the same thing in your circle. I love the, the, the cast and crew of this movie and you really do become like a family. It was a quick shoot for a feature film. Yeah. But we all got very close and, and I think it's immeasurable to, you know, it's immeasurable what, what will come out of it and, and what I've gained from it, just having the experience. I'm so grateful for the opportunity Tom and and I I will cherish it forever. You know, I hope I always get this excited um about making a movie because there's nothing like your first. No, nope, it's not. <laughs> and this movie guys, it's fun as hell. It's it's called Target. It is coming out this Tuesday streaming on demand to again Amazon Prime Video, Apple TV, Google Play and Vudu. Check it out. Uh it's just a fun movie all the way around, starring Jam Murphy and Nick Gregory, written and directed by Thomas G. Waits. There's also going to be an official soundtrack to the film. This movie has some amazing music, and the soundtrack will soon be following the film. Uh, check it out. I want to thank our guests. I want to thank our audience, those of you who are watching live, and the majority of you who will be watching this later on. On behalf of Tom Waits, Jan Murphy, and myself, stay safe and stay walking. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, James. I love you. <laughs>